that. I was in heaven. To John Carlos hitting that grand slam to beat the Pirates. Oh, I saw you share that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You liked it, Dave. Well, who's the bigger? No, I commented the emoji with the eyes balls looking up. That's not liking. You didn't like it? Wait, are you saying I liked it on Twitter? You know what I'm saying. It? Because like, you can't tell me how I feel about something. Well, 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 I'm saying if you liked it, that's kind of tell me how you feel about it, right? I just, I like to like your stuff. Okay. You know? that's, I like to, I'll, I like, in that, I'll take in that, that, I'll like take an Alanis Morissette song. Is that like what it is? It's something, it's something like I that. I like to like your stuff, man. Dude, I've been Here's having the song. weirdest senses of deja vu lately. Like, just, it's like once every day. Like, I think it's good, yeah. right? Because if you're having deja vu, you're like, all right, well, maybe I'm what I'm supposed to be. Like, I stopped by the gas station yesterday, and I'm getting out of the car, and I just, like, pause for a second. I was like, man, I swear. Yes. I swear I've seen me doing, not that I, now, look, I've been to that same gas exactly station a lot, what but, like, about. No. Like everything that's around me, like I don't know, man. Deja vu is the no. weirdest thing. I it's, know exactly. What you're talking. Mine's not once a day though. I'd say I'm talking I'd about like the last last two or three days. I've had one a day. It hadn't. This wow. hadn't been like a. I'm not. You know, slowly turning into to Denzel. I'd say once every eight weeks, great movie, ten yeah. weeks, something like that. Yeah. You know, I'm like, dang. The last two weeks has been weird. I've had things just started falling. Around. I've seen this in person. It's like things are starting to fall around. Yeah, me. I can't to, stand around. It's Blaine starting anymore. to freak me out. It's starting to. I don't know if there's a portal opening up or what it is. If well, Tone's Doctor Strange, you so many yeah, times. This is, you might have just opened the dimension. You may have done this. it. Am I going to get taken to another dimension and fight to save the Earth? I don't know. It's getting I want to watch that, that movie. I'm getting a lot of Spider-Man No Way Home vibes. Like Cone may have accidentally opened the portal and all your enemies are coming for you. It's just a matter of time before hey, they got here. They better be ready. Was bunch of pissed off. Go do your, you, well, first mistake. It's during football season. It first wasn't thing. an accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cone, you sneaky, sneaky <laughs> man. The Oklahoma Sooners look to start four and zero. Tom Luganville from ESPN is going to join us to preview Week Four, and we are going to give you our keys to victory for tonight's Steelers versus Browns game. I'm Jake Crane. It's Thursday, and welcome to Crane and Company. The Big 12 is becoming more interesting every week. And while I picked Oklahoma to win the conference, there are some teams that do have a chance to unseat them, in my opinion. The Big 12 right now is deeper than the Pacific Ocean, and the matchups are more intriguing than Elon Musk at a science fair. Look, Dave Aranda's turned Baylor into a physical team that demands respect. Oklahoma State went from spreading you out to mashing you in, and Kansas is going through a resurgence that rivals the end of the Romanov dynasty. And also, K-State's shown the ability to be pretty dangerous at every turn. And uh, there is another team, I think, in the Big 12 that seems to be turning a corner, the Texas Longhorns. Now, Quinn Ewers might be hurt, but Hudson Cars has experience, and he can make the throws Sark needs to put pressure on all three layers of the defense. And speaking of defense, Texas has gone from not being able to tackle a third-grade math problem to shoving Bama around for three and a half quarters. Long story short, the Big 12 is somewhat up in the air right now. Now, I still feel super jacked and tan about picking Oklahoma to win the conference for a couple of reasons. Reason one, Jeff Levy and Dylan Gabriel together is a great collaboration. They're one step away from dropping a pretty hot mixtape at such a good combo. Now, Gabriel's shown that he can shine when the moments are the brightest in some spots, but he has to use the weapons around him and his scrambling ability to help continue to turn broken plays into broken dreams for a defense. Number two, Brent Venables already seems to have changed the identity of Oklahoma from an offensive team that hopes to stop you into a team that expects to punish ball carriers, catchers, and even the refs if they get if they get in the way. <laughs> now, the schedule sets up better for Oklahoma than any other team with a chance to win the conference. They get Kansas State, Baylor, and Oklahoma State at home. And if they can handle business against Texas, a Big 12 sweep could be in short order. Now, there's a ton of football left to be played, and we know key injuries can happen at any time. But I could not feel better about picking Oklahoma to come out on top of the Big 12. And then saying that, bring in David Cohn. I couldn't feel better about being on the show and also as my friend, mm. former Michigan quarterback. That hit me right and, uh, here. That blank, hit me right That hit here, you right, right, right in the here. fields? Mm -hmm. Good. That's what it was meant for. It's like Cupid, but not really like that. So don't get excited. Blaine Crane, former Western Colorado wide receiver uh, and, uh, again, guy that continues to piss me off at every turn and point. Uh, how are we doing this morning, fellas? Jeez. Hey, I'm doing good. Uh, man, I'm starting to like your Oklahoma pick. A lot. You know, like I said, I'm not a guy that comes on here and 
and says, I told you so. Okay. Not that guy. Never You're been the, that guy. With a smile on your face. Never, you ever say. been that guy. <laughs> and there's some really good matchups this weekend in the Big 12. I mean, you got Baylor at Iowa State, which is not an easy place to play. That game's going to be, you know, as, as physical as, as me at a beach volleyball game. Uh, then you got Kansas State going to Oklahoma, as we mentioned. Texas going to Texas Tech, going to Lubbock. That, that's a weird game when they go to Lubbock. I mean, you remember the Michael Crabtree touchdown at the end? It's just, it's kind of weird. Hudson Card, though, has experience. Quinn Ewers, I know they want him back. I hope he gets back as soon as possible. But that game could get a little weird. And then, you know, obviously we, we have some ones on the periphery. Kansas and Duke in a game we never thought that mattered outside of basketball. But turns out it does. Yeah. They're going to start playing and, and all of a sudden the debate breaks out. But it's not because they're actually getting good football teams. So, uh, look, I, I do like Oklahoma still to win the Big 12. But Texas and Oklahoma, they're leaving. But I love the ads the Big 12 are making. Cincinnati, UCF, yep. BYU, Houston. Houston. Yep. It's good ads, man. First of all, I got a full eight last night, guys. You got a full I eight? Been able to full Your eight. eyes look I haven't been today. able to say that in a while. I'm proud of you yeah. for that. Wife Did you sleep just, with the, the no. Star Wars mask on? You got Darth oh, Vader? Have, come on. I have the CPAP mask and... God, those things. You got the goggles? The those things scare me. Like, you're going, just, full, just in case you're you're going to, full VR when you're just, ha, just in case you have to sleep on a plane, you wear the goggles? And, like, I, I don't. It's, it's mostly because Darby Lou likes to watch TV late at night because mm-hmm. she doesn't want to go to sleep. Are they early. blacked out goggles? And she just turns the volume down, and I put the mask on. <laughs> and so I can't imagine what my son thinks when he sees me asleep. I'm like, man, he thinks I'm Darth Vader. Like, so I, no, sure, no joke. Makes yeah, yeah, no joke. Is? Luke Skywalker. No, my yeah, father exactly. had one of those CPAP machines. And when I was younger, I'm trying to remember how old I was. The first time I walked in there while he was asleep and had it on, I, I panicked. I thought he was like on life support. I walked in there and it's like either that or he's, you know, he already was my father, so he wasn't gonna tell me that. But I go in there, it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh. yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. It's like, dad. Every time I walk by his room, I think I hear is da da da. Yeah, that's da, exactly da, right. Da, yeah, I was like, all right. But uh, yeah, and I think that's the sound Oklahoma is gonna be making to a lot of people this season too. Look, look I had Oklahoma State win in the Big Twelve. And uh-huh. still, look, I still mean, reason, uh, look, they're still looking good, but gave up forty-four points in the opener to Central Michigan. Now Central might be the best team in the MAC, but you could immediately tell the loss of Jim Knowles had an effect on that sure. team. And where did he go to the Buckeyes? Great. They're only going to get better on the defensive side of the ball. But Derek Mason comes in, give up 44 points in the opener. I, I don't feel as confident in my Oklahoma State pick anymore. Baylor was another team. I was like, man, look, maybe Baylor can really run this thing back, have another great season in the Big 12. I still think they can, but already a loss to a good BYU team. And we saw what Oregon was able to do against mm-hmm. BYU. When I saw what the... Um, the Oklahoma Sooners were able to do at Nebraska. Again, I know I know everyone's going to say, well, Nebraska is not a good football team, but on the road in a, in a rivalry and game, lose. winning that game the way they did, playing efficient football, I thought was fantastic. And you made the best point, Jake. Here's the schedule for Oklahoma. Oklahoma State, home. Baylor, home. Yep. Kansas State this weekend, home. Kansas, I can't even believe we're bringing up Kansas. They're playing great football. They get them at home. And then you play Texas. Neutral site always with the Red River shootout. Now, I'm not giving up on Texas, just like you said, because in the second half of that Alabama game, when Hudson Card had to come in, he played great football. The team still played great football. And then the UTSA game, where we thought that was a trap game, UTSA could have won that game. I think I had them either minus two or plus two and a half or money line, maybe even. And um, Texas was able to pull away late at the end. I'm not giving up on Texas. I hope that they can play Oklahoma tight in the Red River shootout, but Oklahoma's looking looking solid. The game, and I said this before the year, remember, you can go back and look at our Big 12 predictions. The one game I have Oklahoma losing in conference. You know where it is? Kansas State. No, hold on. At Iowa State. Oh, at Iowa State. That game worries me. If I'm an Oklahoma fan. Really? I'm telling you, weird things happen, man. That's where Jason was born, man. I'm just telling you. Weird things happen in places that grow corn at night. Just (laughs) weird things that children come out of them that, that, you know, are murderers. It just... I mean, what happens in cornfields? Let's Hold be honest. What happens? They not a lot of great stuff night? outside of taking the corn away. Well, anywhere they grow corn, like it still grows at night, right? Or is there some places where it just grows at night? Corn grows at night. Is that I'm what not, you said? No. I thought you said where. Corn I'm saying grows. any place that where they grow corn, and then you got to go play them at night. I think it's a night game. Weird now things I'm with happen. You. Now I'm with you. And Ames, I believe it's a night. Well, they may probably haven't even announced it yet, but I think. It's going to be a night game. And weird things happen at night in Iowa in all cylinders. I'm just going to put it that way. Mm. Speaking about all cylinders, Blaine, what's going on over there at the Boots Club? And Well, I was going to give who I had picked for the Big 12. I had Texas. Texas. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just don't know if I can stay with it after Quinn gets hurt. Like, I'm basing that off Quinn Ewers being there, playing and being the quarterback for Texas. So you're, you're a bad I think shit. hard still. Uh, I mean, he looked good, but I don't know if he looked good enough to, to stay in that same spot for them to win it. 
I know you lost to Alabama at one. I know you ended up beating UTSA by 21. But still, Quinn just the, – the little Quinn played in that game – Quinn looked extremely good. But they seemed to have – they had seemed to have bigger problems than just quarterback play last year, right? Sark's first Oh, it was in oh, last year, yeah. sorts of problems. So for you to pick them, you must have thought not only was Quinn Ewers going to ball out, mm-hmm. but that they had fixed a lot of those problems. Well, some, yeah. I Which know I mean, that it, Quinn Ewers going down hurt, but it seems like those other issues are sort of getting fixed. So that still has to make you feel good. The defense looks yeah, different. For sure. it's sad. You, if you close your eyes and listen to a Texas game when they're on defense – it sounds different when they're hitting people. That's been the difference. But is anybody – Mike Gundy ought to be sponsored by Mortimer's. He's so salty about Oklahoma going to the SEC. Every time this dude gets to the podium, they're like, hey, Mike, how's your wife doing? It's like, she's doing great. Oklahoma's soft. Uh, yeah, I don't – I was going to – I'm going to talk to Tom Luganbill about this, but I don't, I don't blame him. I'd be kind of mad, too. I would be, too, but look, you but didn't the, get the, the, the one the line that I thought, the one line I kind of rolled my eyes at when he was like, yeah, well, you know what? They decided to follow the money, and that's okay. I was thinking, like, yeah, that, it is okay. That's what you did. Yeah. Like, You're following the money. That's exactly. So you well, anybody that makes fun that. of anybody for following the money, let's be, come on, guys. You can't, you can't blame them Come on, them guys. That. You can't blame them for that. I do hate to see that rivalry go away, though. And I, it sounds like from the Oklahoma's AD side that it's Oklahoma State who's kind of, well, we're so bitter about it that we don't even want to keep playing. Well, well, look, if that's the case, that's on y'all. It all, always goes back to the playground, and it goes back to the high school hallway. That's where it goes back. One Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, two pretty girls at the high school. One gets asked to prom by who's going to be the prom king, and the other one just doesn't. Who's salty? The one who doesn't. Just how it is. Well, you know Slide. what you can do then? If you're that you know salty what? You about start, it, you run more you and get them. prettier. Beat them. The you last time prettier. you play them before they go off the schedule, yeah. beat them. You, Leave that taste in their mouth. You go get Boy, your well, hair Michigan done. Notre Dame. Your makeup did. You know what I'm saying, Blaine? Get prettier. I'm just ready to see you in some Ohio State get-ups, man. Next Wednesday, don't Next miss Wednesday. it. Okay, Next Wednesday, okay, good, good. Right, there's a that. date. Record that. There's a date. Oh, yes. it's recorded. It's live. A tablet date. somewhere, and I, was, I just can't wait to see it during one of your get off your your lawns, right? Yes, Blaine. Oh, yes, right. that's great. Okay, this that's is this great. week. Can we focus on this week? You're right. right. You're right. All right, let's go to uh, the Draco. Okay, nice. Four, four dollar ninety nine cent. Do- Hit the oh, button, man. David. Malfoy oh, up in here. It's a Draco. <laughs> All right, did we the football com- uh, community overhype? Anthony Richardson, too quick. I just realized he has zero touchdowns to four interceptions. Well, if you that go means- back, if you go back and watch the Utah game, I've been saying this since the Utah game, and literally during the middle of the Utah game, Billy Napier is not using Anthony Richardson the right way, in my opinion. It's like this: if I go rent a Ferrari for a day, I'm not driving through a bunch of school zones at 15 miles an hour. I'm not driving the speed limit. You've got Anthony Richardson for one year, Billy, for one year. You got to run him more. You got to run him more. He's not Joe Flacco, man. I know you're trying to make him look like a pocket passer, maybe get him drafted number one overall, but it's costing you. Against Utah, there were so many opportunities for Anthony Richardson to just pull the ball and run it on the zone read, but there's basically no built-in quarterback run game, no Q power, no Q lead, no power read. You have an extra hat in the box. Anthony Richardson is gone after this year. He is gone. Bye. See you later. Let's wave at the dock as the boat leaves. It ought to be dadgum near 50-50, Cone, because he's not a pocket passer right now. He's got a good arm. I think he's a natural thrower of the ball, but he's he can't see it yet. He can't go through the reads yet. He's not to that point. So you know what you do? You know what helps people get separation in routes? You know what? helps people get open down the field and makes it an easier throw for Anthony Richardson? When you run them, when they're scared to death, when those safeties are having to walk up because they're scared to death that when the quarterback runs, there's an extra hat in the box. That's how it works. Or you can actually get even numbers in the box with the safety, okay? But Billy is not using him right. So I don't think it is even as much overhyping Anthony Richardson as if he was being used correctly. Like if you gave Anthony Rich- I can't believe I'm going to say this. If you gave Anthony Richardson the Gus Miles on, it'd be a totally different situation. Mm. If they treated Anthony Richardson like they treated Nick Marshall, Cam Newton, mm. and hell, even John Reese Plumley at UCF right now. I mean, the, the, it's, I don't understand. And I, it's his first year, and I know Billy is getting his feet wet, and I understand he's trying to run his style, but early, you have to be malleable. 
You have to be. You're inheriting that roster. Regardless of the transfer portal, you have to play to their strengths. He's trying to fit a square peg through a round hole right now, and it's not working. Yeah. Well, we could, due to Anthony Richardson's size, he's in size, speed, and, and arm talent and ability, he's going to continue to make unbelievable plays this season. And when we see those plays, we're going to say, man, look at that. Like, what if he did that every single play? And the way that he was able to, at will, do whatever he wanted against a, a good Utah defense, that's when we were saying, man, he, that's Cam Newton. He looks like Cam Newton. Maybe he's better than Cam Newton. The only problem is Cam did it every play. Yeah, well, you, yeah. Every game. Well, you know why Cam Newton was so dangerous in the past game? I don't see Cam was, Newton was didn't have the highest football IQ of all time. He wasn't a savant when it came to reading leverage and safety and stuff like that. Teams were so scared to death. He was going to pull the ball down and run. Or they were going to have a design run for him that those safeties kept creep, creep. It's like a TLC song, man. Creep, creep. They just creep up, scared to death of it. And then he would hit him over the top. Because guess what? Unless I'm mistaken, I don't think one player on that Auburn offense with Cam Newton played an NFL snap outside of Cam Newton or started an NFL game. He was out there playing with eight and four guys, but the defense was so scared of him running the ball. Darvin Adams looked like A.J. Brown, man. Like, it's the truth. It's just the truth. Go ahead, Blaine. All right, let's go to a question here from Devin21, hashtag Ask Cranny Company. Oh, well, not a question. Last night I was telling my dad uh, about you guys and about the show. He told me he remembered your dad at Auburn and thought it was cool, and he says thank you all for doing the show. So, Devin, tell your dad. Devin, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Travis Elrod, hashtag Ask Cranny Company. Does Texas have any path to the college football playoff this year? Um, your only loss is that here's what would have to happen. Because, uh, uh, again, I don't think Bama is losing a game until the SEC championship game. So in, in that scenario, in the scenario that I think is going to happen, because we can kick around a bunch of hypotheticals, you can't lose another game, obviously, yeah. after losing to Bama. If Texas goes undefeated at, at, t- past this point and wins the Big 12, wins the Big 12 championship game, you'd have to have a tiny bit of chaos, but I don't think there's – I think they could sneak in as the fourth team. Especially if it's a you have a Big 12 rep in the playoffs, because so, let's think about it, right? Let's say Georgia doesn't lose mm-hmm. until uh, until the playoff, which I think right now they're not going to lose in the playoff. But so let's say Georgia, they're in. When the SC championship, they're in. Alabama loses one game, that's to Georgia. They're in. So you got Georgia and Bama in. Mm-hmm. So look around the rest of the country. One of Ohio State or Michigan is going That'll take in. care of each other. One of those two. And you then they'll still have to go State play in the there. Big Ten Championship. They'll still have to go play in the Big Ten Championship. So you have one of them. If Texas, if it comes down to two Big Ten teams or one Big Ten team and a Big 12 team, I think they'll go one Big Ten team and a Big 12 well, where team. Where are you saying the other fourth is? Like an unbeaten Clemson or something? And either an unbeaten Clemson or a team that comes out of the Pac-12 undefeated that's not Utah. Because Utah does have that loss to Florida, which is Mm. looking worse by the moment. So let's say, just for example, USC goes undefeated. Hmm. All right. And, and, well, they'd get in over a one loss. They would get in, they would get over a one loss team. But here's the main thing Oregon. Texas lost to Bama. Oregon lost to Georgia. Badly. Badly. That would be the one kind of, but again, if, what if Oregon goes undefeated the rest of the way in the Pac 12 and your only loss is to the best team in the country? Yeah. Even though it was that bad. Even though it was that bad, David. Um, so let's see. You 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 need Clemson to lose one for sure. You need Clemson Here's to an lose interesting one. scenario though. If if the Buckeyes and the Wolverines go both go unbeaten, similar to Alabama and Georgia, until they play, until each, they other. play each other, and then the loser has one loss, and then the the winner of that goes and plays in the conference championship and loses. Let's say they lose to like a Wisconsin or whoever comes out of the the Big Ten West. Then you're going to have the champion of that conference with one loss and that other team with one loss. But the head to head, I think you got to take the head to head. I agree, but you'd still have a one loss Big Ten champion coming from that with a Texas team who won their conference with one loss and possibly a Clemson team with one loss. See, this is where it's going to get weird. This is what, Think about this. Let We can play the hypothetical game. Georgia goes undefeated to the playoff they're in. Bama loses one game. That's to Georgia. Let's just say in the SEC championship game. I know some people in the comments will be like, well, Bama's going to lose before then. Well, they haven't yet. I don't think they are. So they're, they're going to put Bama in with one loss if it's to Georgia. So Georgia and Bama are going to be in. You might as well just write that in stone and put it in a cave somewhere for thousands of years from now. What's going to get weird is if Clemson goes undefeated, Ohio State or Michigan goes undefeated, wins the uh, conference championship game, and imagine if USC goes undefeated out there. What are you going to do? Yes. What are you going to do? My thing when I always say this is, though, 
It never happens. It like it doesn't never, until it does, my, and that's a good point. It it doesn't until it does, and it could, and it you know this could be the year for chaos. But my thing is, we've never even had four teams that have a shot to win the championship. I Last year, we didn't even have three the way Michigan performed against <laughs> Georgia. I want to see it. <laughs> I know, I know you want to see it, <laughs> so that you can come on here and say we need expansion right now. I'll dress up as the Joker for a week. You should dress Paint up as everything. conference expansion, like with brackets off to the side of you. You need to smile more. Cone. What I'm else, Blaine? I'm smiling every day. You are um, smiling. Sister Riggs, hashtag Ask Cranny Company. If BYU and Utah played the Holy War this year, who would win that game? <sighs> I, I would I would go... Where Where is it going to be played? Are we saying neutral site? Heaven. Neutral in heaven. In heaven? <laughs> <laughs> uh, neutral site game. Give me BYU. Mm. Give me BYU the 30. Not a bad pick. I think I'll take Utah. Okay. So that's a pick em. Um, I'd probably get Utah as well. Um, let's go Colin Houston. What's the best kind of potatoes? Mashed potatoes, hash, uh, hash browns, or french fries? Mash Where potatoes. are the hash browns coming from? Waffle House? Yes. Okay. Anywhere else? I'll take mashed. You like them covered, smothered, anywhere else, brother? Waffle, dude. The Love Waffle House hash browns. Gym. They're on a top a tier. Different level. They're top tier. Double order. Well done. Bring them now. You know what I like about Waffle House? They cook the food in front of me. Yeah, that's what you I see like. See what's going on. It's yeah. Transparency. Yeah. I'm all for transparency. It's good for you, Mike. RFF Lifestyle uh, says Lifestyle. Cooper Rush and Irish Kirk Cousins. We don't we, look. Look, Cooper Rush. The way I see it, he's undefeated this year. Retire. Like, better than Retire. Here's what's gonna happen. What if Cooper Rush? It's like 4-0 or 5-0 or whenever Dak comes back. Like, what? I mean, what What do you do? And then Dak comes back and loses the first game he starts. What's going to happen then? Dak got dacked. Dak got Just dacked. Just like with Tony Romo. That's exactly right. Um, D-Dub, hashtag Ask Crane and Company. What's a sports memory that still makes you mad to this day? A sports memory. Uh, let's see. Uh, Auburn mad. playing Penn State last Saturday. I'm still pissed about it. There was one time when Michigan was playing Michigan State and they led the entire game. Michigan State wasn't up for one second of the game. And the punt went all the way back to the oh, end. Yeah, you guys bad. remember what I'm talking about. Bad. They landed on the fumble in the end zone with zero seconds. I, I'll tell they you They won what. the game after the time had already expired. You want to know what's worse? That right there, you can't make that up. I got one You that's couldn't worse. write that in a movie. I got one that's worse. Imagine your team's in the national championship game. Okay. For the second time Wait, in four years. Wait, hold on. I'm a Michigan years. fan. I can't see it. Yeah, the <laughs> second time in four years. You've already won one. Uh-huh. You got Saban. It is at your rival school. You can guess which one this is. Saban's at your rival school, and they're just killing it. Recruiting. You can see it. Just the tidal wave keeps getting bigger and bigger. But you're in the natty. Again, you proved it wasn't just Cam Newton. Not only that, you're up 21-3 to against Florida State. And Jimbo Fisher, Jameis Winston, the quarterback, being goofy athletic. But you have Nick Marshall, which the week before, you came, you uh, had the kick six. Mm. A couple weeks before that, you had the prayer in Jordan Hare. It's look, God's season, right? Yeah. You just, there's no way we can't lose. And Gus Malzahn, who just happens to be your leader, doesn't send out the safe punt return team. You're up 21 to three. There's like a minute to go before the half. Florida State has the ball at midfield. It's fourth and three. They need some momentum. And you set up a return from the fifth. This is how stupid this was. You know what you do when the ball's at the 50 on punt return? You know the odds of you actually getting a return? This, they're not good, David. They're not good because you're at midfield. Auburn's dumbass set up a return. Like, you're going to, a minute left to go in the half. You're going to catch the ball and knee it out because they get the ball to start the half. You geniuses set out a punt. Y'all call it a punt return instead of safe, and they fake it, and they go score a touchdown. You deserve to lose. That's that's when I'd had it with Gus Malzahn. That, at that moment is when I realized maybe Gus Malzahn doesn't know as much as what everybody else knows. You know the one guy that knows like a lot about one thing but knows nothing else? I think that's Gus Malzahn, like with offense. Yeah. Like he understands well, offense he and like position for that. people used to Yeah, people used to be like, yeah, he'd sit at Waffle House and put the salt shaker and the pepper here and do all this stuff offensively. <laughs> well, anybody want to go tell him that you're not going to return a punt when they're punting from midfield? especially in the national championship game, I'd have fired myself. I would have fired at halftime. I would have gone to the podium and said, guys, obviously I am suffering from a disease that Even I've just totally were, forgotten. So you were, you would have still been winning in the national championship. You'd be like, no, would have fired myself. Fire. That's how bad of a decision it was. Mm. And it cost you. It cost you. Because they, how much you lose by? A touchdown, right? Send out the state punting. They never score that touchdown. You win another national championship game. And you're probably at Auburn forever. But now you're at UCF. Losing teams you shouldn't. Congrats on the win over FAU. 
I got I mean, some. Gene Chizik won a national title. He wasn't there forever. You mean no, Cam Newton? Yeah, you mean Cam Newton? You mean Cam Newton won a national, Cam Newton national, national title? Well, what we, so what are we saying? If you win a national championship at, at, at Auburn, you're there you there. No, 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 if you have Cam Newton. Yeah, if you have Cam Newton, you, that was Cam Newton who won that. Come on, Cone. He, he, Hold he on, wait, so if Gus Valzon had won the 2013 national championship. That was Gus. 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 You want to know why? The other one was. Because you didn't have Cam Newton. Yeah, okay. the other one, yeah. yeah. But Gene Chizik did this the whole year. <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> Good, Cam. Good job, guys. Good, Cam. Hey, be better than their organization. Hey, yeah, every, everybody else, do what Cam Newton's doing. Yeah. That, how about that for an idea? It's like, we don't treat you as a coach. You don't treat the, here's what, uh, certain here's, players differently. Do you want to know what, you know what like that, when he would— Unless they're Cam. Here's, here's what the game plan looked like. This is exactly what it looked like every time for our— So Gene Chizik would bring the team in. He'd be like, guys, listen. All right, meeting one on Monday. Here's the game plan. This is it. All right? <laughs> You don't have to memorize any plays. Here's where just you have to line up, and we're going to run Cam Newton play every time. Mm -hmm. That's just where we snap the ball to Cam. All you got to worry about is just getting in the snap. Bus driver, get him there. Pilot, land the plane safe. Let's get him to the game. We're going to win. We're going to win. Dude, no other player in the offense played in the NFL. It's hilarious. Mm. He won it with us. He won it with us playing with him. All right, speaking about us, let's go to rapid fire, David. Rapid fire. Okay, hold on. Pew, pew, pew. Too. Let's do it. All right, boys. It looks like Robert Sarver is looking yes. to sell the Suns. And my question is, who will the new owner be, Giannis or Luca? Because they've been owning the Suns. <laughs> <laughs> I get that now. Yeah. Look, Ben, we, we're not getting that like angel. Ben. Maybe the Suns. I told Daily Wire NBA. Plus, I said, look, Let's buy the Suns. The hey, scoop in now. Buy the Suns, let us run it. Yes. Okay? We'll get things figured out. We won't have any sexual misconduct, that's for sure. Well, Blaine's going to be there. Unless it's on the court. Actually, now that I think about you. <laughs> Unless it's on the court. <laughs> that's it. Wow. That's All it. right. Well, that's, now, here's, now here's, we're fired. The, 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 no, the, the quotes, oh, that's so funny. The quotes uh, that he had, I thought were really interesting when they talked about it. He was, you know, like, I know I've made mistakes. I'm not perfect. I thought the year away, you know, I could fix myself, uh, you know, but in this current unforgiving climate, all the good I've done doesn't matter. Dude, you said the N-word like five times. And like, you can't, c come on, man. You, you can't do that. You can't do that. I, I know as a society, we're quick to cancel people and, and I don't believe in that, but you know you screwed up. Like, you know you screwed up. There wasn't any denying it. He didn't come out and say, I did not say any of it. So you're selling the sons. And the Phoenix Mercury, which I didn't even know existed. Apparently, it's a WNBA team. They, and apparently, the WNBA is a basketball league for women. Yes. Have you not heard this? What's a no. woman? Huh? What is a woman? What is that? I found I out about this organization because that the loser of the fantasy football team, which I have a good chance of being that loser, wow. gets to go to one. Well, I thought Phoenix Mercury was like a space mission. That's what like, <laughs> that Elon's yeah. money or something. Yeah, that too. Okay. That's the more popular one. Okay, that's what I thought. That's, I just want to make sure I wasn't. They have that's to share, good. They have to like put something you're different on their Twitter. You're heating up. Separate them. Okay. So yeah, you're heating. You're heating up right um, now. That's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, you got to look. You got to get them out. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> You got Donald Sterling no out, knows. you got to get him out. No, yeah, this guy, get him, yeah. Get him How are you out? still here? Huh? There's yeah. certain things you should get canceled for. There's uh, certain things you shouldn't. Yeah, you should get canceled. Yeah, you, you know, my biggest thing on it, I think most people are willing to play by any any sort of rules. Like, whatever the rules are, establish them. You know, whatever you can say or can't say Bike or can't do or can't do. The the I think a, a problem a lot of people are having is when it comes to a double standard. So, like, mm -hmm. if there are players, let's say they're NBA players on a court, if they're saying something or if they get into sexual misconduct or let's say they do something in their pr private lives that's, that's uh, similar to what this guy's being accused of, are we going to have NBA players kicked out of the league too? Like that's something to look for moving forward. <laughs> for sure. I mean, everyone should get held to the same standard no matter yeah. what you own or what you do. I mean. I agree. I, I, Equal justice. For sure. So we'll see about that. Jacob deGrom. You're Mets out. That's pitcher. Broke a record that stood since 1914. 40th straight start allowing three runs or fewer. Well, you know, DeGrom breaks the record, Scherzer breaks the record. I want to break something as a Braves fan. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of time before a Mets player breaks something anyway. So the way the, they break down at the end of the year. It's, look, Jacob DeGrom's the best pitcher of my generation. Okay, DeGrom, we all know, is Irish for sitting the dugout. Uh, what he's been able to do, him and Cat Eyes, Scherzer, uh, look, they're a nasty one too. Carrasco getting back as well is going to help him. Look, the Mets... And, and I said I thought the Mets were going to fall apart. There's still time. There's still time. I, I still think they're going to get the wild card and lose, which would be absolutely hilarious and poetic justice to me because I'm not a Mets fan, okay? 
I'm a Braves fan. We're all a fan of somebody. But look, DeGrom's is just absolutely nasty. You're up there pumping 101 with movement. It's tailing away like a comet. Your slider's sliding better than, than a, a hamburger place. I mean, come on. It's some, his changeup? His changeup? Stop. How, what, how do you hit that? You're guessing. You're, you're guessing. It is, it's me on that, Jeopardy, buddy. I've seen interviews, it's a guess. interviews with baseball guys, and you're like, what's it like going against DeGrom? You're guessing. It's a, you're going to go A, B, C, or D. You're just going to guess That's a it. letter. It's Christmas time tree. To get in there. Just circle it and pray. We'll see what the grade is. I'm guessing slider every time I get in there. I'm just, I'm guessing, guessing That's I'm it. guessing heater. That's it. I'm guessing heater every pitch. I don't know how you don't guess 101. Like, I'm not adjusting to 101 miles per yeah, hour. Yeah, it's, it's, he's the best pitcher I've seen. So, do you think he's the best pitcher of all time? Of all time? I need to Pick wait till his Rump. career is over to see it. I need to see the I mean, he's doing there. this coming back from Tommy John surgery. I think it made him stronger. I think that they may have sent him to the same place they sent Wolverine Tony. and just pumped him full of antimanium, let him out in the snow in the woods. Fights in the seventh. That's one theory. Fights in the seventh inning in robot arms. Let's come on. Let's figure it out. Well, Jacob DeGrom's literally exactly. got a robot arm. So, 130 miles per hour. <laughs> you have All to right. sign a waiver. Bruce Arians, former Tampa Bay yes. Bucks coach, who's now in the front office, w- received a warning from the NFL over sideline conduct when Mike Evans and Lattimore got into their uh, what would you call it? A scuffle? I call it a oh. punk move by Mike Evans. Okay. When he blindsided him like Michael Orr. What's Bruce Arians doing down there getting involved in L- this? Listen, Bruce, you got heart problems, dog. Calm listen, down. Yeah, they hit him with that Tony Stark thing. They yeah. put it him. You seen it? Um, here's my thing. As somebody who was absolutely belligerent to the officials. The whole, I have no room to speak on this at all. Other you than... You were on the sidelines as a coach? David, you can ask Wayne. Wait, yeah, what, it was a problem. You to the referee? Oh, oh it was a problem. How bad I can't it? stand referees. Oh, you can't st- every I word can't. in the book. You better hope you weren't wearing those referee shorts. A penalty a game. So, I, Not a penalty a, a penalty game. A, a penalty game. or two. Wait, so a what did the head coach... A penalty say? a game. Not a lot. I see that smile on your face right now, so I know well, I know that you were saying some stuff. Well, they just referees. Just there's an old saying: those who can't play anymore, coach; those who could never play, are coach referee. And uh, I stand by that. And they do nothing but piss me. I have to defend they, referees. No, the they, referees they, they, there's no accountability to this show. I stand up. For I you. don't dislike them as human beings. I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, y'all coached. Yeah. No. Well, they're terrible. Here, they, they, there's no accountability. There's no accountability. That's their boss. That and being a politician, there's no accountability. Oh, here's a holding. As a special teams coordinator, the amount of holdings that are thrown on big returns almost led me to sociopathic tendencies. Mm. That's how bad it was. How many times are you watching a game and somebody breaks either a big punt return or kickoff return? Everybody's like, yeah, you know, saying like, and all of a sudden it's like, but there's a flag, yeah, all the time. idiot. No, My thing is like, uh, they, I don't. holding think on they every know play. Really, what they're looking at? I don't and think so they it's know. The eighty percent of them guessing, and that's what makes me mad. If you knew what you were looking at, like, because they're holding, there's holding on every play mostly in football. But if you knew what you're looking at, and you threw the flags, then you can't come here like a big boy and explained it to me yeah. what you saw. Then that's fine. But when I look at you and ask you what you see and you just run around the field like this with your whistle in your mouth, that's when I want to strangle you in a dark room. Okay? So, like, let's just do, know what you're looking at. If you miss a call, that's fine. We're all human. Just don't be, just don't be terrible and have no idea what's going on yes, and then please. try to come to me with a valid point. That makes no sense. So, the head coaches are your team. You better know the number of who did it. Too. Yeah. There's been many times where it's like, what number? What number? He's like, coach, it was a... Uh... Number 16. And it's like, player's not on he's the not even on the yeah. field. Genius 16 died in a car crash before the season, idiot. Well, that's more. Ah, that's man. on a, it went a whole different. That got there. dark pretty quick. But the head coaches of the team, they, they never got onto you off. You get flagged for yelling. I mean, yeah. sometimes, but they're as pissed as we are. So why is it in football that the coaches never get kicked out? But in baseball, it's like this, you know. Just it's two this, totally different set things. Huh? It wouldn't I be know as it's cool. Two to- I know it's like two totally different coach sports. I'm just out. saying it seems like in baseball, they're like, they, they want you to cross that line so yeah. you can make the, a theater of it, you know, mm-hmm. and they throw you out of the game. Yeah. Like yeah. Football, it's not Nick cool. Saban's not going anywhere. Yeah. No, Nick Saban could say anything to a referee and they're not going to throw him yeah. out. Like, I have your family kidnapped. Like, and they'd be like, Coach Saban, who's holding? I promise. <laughs> Again? Stop holding them. Please. <laughs> oh, man. All right, last one. Yep. Sounds like Roger Federer's final match may be a doubles match 
and he wants to be paired with Rafael Nadal. You're going to cry, aren't you? Oh, I'm here for it. I'm going to be tuned in. I don't care. I don't care if it's on Saturday, Sunday. I don't care what football games are going on. I'm going to be there for it. I'm going to be honest with you. I I could care less. I know. Um, I know. You've made, I, there's, you've made that very clear. Yeah, like there's, I'm sure there's, oh. there's a great SWAT game on that's going to be on. <laughs> SWAT game. You would not watch a SWAT game over Roger oh, Federer oh. and Rafael Nadal oh, paired together for his final match. I don't care if they played on top of a volcano, David. This well, would be like cool. I'd watch that. For that's me. what it would take to get you involved. This would be no, like I'm, Tiger I'm Woods and Jack Nicklaus playing together for for their last match. <sighs> no, I don't, not to you're me. You're not there for it. No, <laughs> I'm I'm glad you're gonna enjoy it, and I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy it. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on I hold for on. one, I'm not going to enjoy it because I'm not going to be able to see it because tennis won't give it to me. Those are two totally different things. What, what do you mean? I'm saying on? I would want to watch. Is it. Is we're not gonna be able to watch tennis it? Tennis won't let me watch it. Why not? No, 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 no. They don't like for you to be able to watch the stuff. I never get to watch the majors. I can't watch the French Open. You Why? Gotta download all these apps. It's very exclusionary. So no, I'm not gonna be able to enjoy it, Jake. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying I would want to. So you have to go out of I your way watch to watch tennis. You know, you know. How, oh hell! Remember no. how last season in the I don't care if they NBA, played my living room in the summer when the NBA playoffs were on, and then you couldn't watch some of the games because they were on NBA TV. Or oh NBA yeah, yeah. Plus, and you had to do the whole thing. That's tennis all the time. That's you're not, awful. I'm not gonna be able to watch it. But maybe after they play and I find out who wins and Roger Federer is retired and it's all over with, maybe they'll. Yeah, play. I don't know if true I like. Story. I don't like Roger's like true last s- match being a doubles match. Hey, true story kinda though. Kind of weird, but I'm here for it. If if Roger Federer called me and was like, "Hey, me and Nadal are gonna play doubles against somebody in your living room on Saturday at 11 o'clock," you know what I'd tell him? Well, y'all have a good time. My fiance will make y'all some food. I'm gonna go to the sports bar and watch the football game. Stop it! I swear. Stop it! You can play if they in, my in your room. backyard. You wouldn't watch it. No, I'd tell them to be quiet. The game's on. I got bets out. There's important stuff going on. Y'all play y'all's y'all's yeah, croquet with rackets. Man, outside that's somewhere. intense. You're never gonna come watch Blaine and myself play a tennis match. No, I'll watch y'all play. It'll be hilarious. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, for the for. It might not be so funny for the other team. No, I think we play really good. How are you feeling? You feeling good these days? I always feel good. Big serve. Wait, are y'all are y'all playing doubles together? Yeah. Now why didn't I get invited to play? Okay, that's well, fine. Well, we just did it. No, no, okay. I'll find somebody. Justine, I got to get another <laughs> mail. I'm sorry, I can't have a girl on my team. It's, I'm sorry. It's science. Oh, I appreciate man. you though. You can be there. Anyways, that's it for rapid fire. That's it. That's Blaine Booster got. Club. Let's go to, hmm, I want, Josh Reagan says, WNBA on top of Volcano might get some eyes. It would, especially, you know what, I'm not even going to say that. Uh, yeah, maybe, say kind of, probably not. Say it. Blaine said Phoenix Mercury was a NASA mission name. That's Doesn't it sound like it? Or is that, that sounds exact. no, it sounds exactly um, like Leo it. Maltos, what's up, Leo? Arian sent Mike as an attack dog. But Evans hit him face up, so I don't know why you're saying it's a blind side. Hit him face up? Go look at it. Marshawn Lattimore's arguing with somebody else. Mike Evans runs up, and as he turns, hits him. That's still blindsiding somebody. If that was a block during the game, it would be a 15-yard penalty for a blindside block. Okay. He did blindside him. Maybe, maybe. But I know this. Talking about you coaching, you want that guy on your team. For You'd sure. Like to coach Mike Evans. That's exactly Because right. I know I'd want him as one of my wideouts. Yes. Sure. Yeah. That guy, oh, he's riding for the team. Like He'd coach. make my DBs a lot better yeah. having to guard Mike Evans. But I will say, the, the weird thing about the Bruce Arian situation, too, is Todd Bowles and them said, hey, the Saints, he wasn't in the booth because the Saints didn't offer us the booth for him. And the Saints were like, uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We offered t- t- John Wilkes' booth. Well, yeah. hopefully not that. Well, yeah. well, don't go to the theater. Yeah. One Look more. behind you. You're dead. All right, let's go to... Oh, well, we can't get Abe Lincoln. Cones high water pants. There he is. Um, what surgery did Drew Brees have? Because he was definitely better after the fact. I, kinda, I think they're related to the, the Grom, yeah. the Tom and John um, Drew. I believe it was elbow, elbow or shoulder. I can't remember if it was elbow or shoulder. But it was it, definitely shoulder. Yeah, it, it was shoulder. He did. I mean, he did. Look. They've made such big movements in medicine. I mean, look at an ACL now. Back in the day, you tear your ACL, you're done. Booby Miles, sorry, man. Shouldn't have left you in there up 45. Career's over. You go play Juco for a little bit. Go see a doctor from Midland. Do we trust him? I don't know. I don't. But now you get ACL. You come back. You're stronger. You're bionic. Yeah. Um, Was Drew Brees actually better after 
I think he was. He's just in a better situation. Um, I don't know. He was still good. Well, it's a, he was a, good a, at Purdue. Well, the more yeah. experience. Well, Saban he wanted him, right? Like Saban wanted Drew Brees in Miami when he was coaching the yep. Dolphins, and the I think it was the medical staff for Miami who said no, he didn't pass our physical. If Drew Brees goes to Miami and plays for Saban, does he ever come Who back to knows? college football? You know what? I don't even want to think about that. As a guy that's from Auburn, I want to tell everybody on the Miami medical staff, you guys blew it for a lot of people. And you, it's not just Dolphins fans. Okay, I know you guys are back a little bit now with Tyreek, Tua, Jalen Waddell, the Penguin, Jacecki. You think about that. Skedaddle. Think about this. The, the other the coach skedaddle. Alabama almost got was Rich Rodriguez. That would have been so great. Can As we stop talking fan? about like awesome things that would have happened to Alabama? And now, yeah. now I look up and they're getting led by Sauron. So now we're talking about this. Jake brings up the Auburn National Championship. Do y'all want me to leave? Like, I don't understand. Like, are y'all just we're trying, trying to put me in a bad mood today? how much we had to say for you to walk off the set. Well, it's getting there. Yeah? Uh, yeah, it's getting okay. there. It's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, uh, now it's a challenge, Booster Club. Y'all hear yeah, that? that's exactly right. Now yeah. it's a challenge. Just don't bring up anything about Kirk Cousins being great. We'll be fine. Mm, okay. We'll so we're going to be in great. What else from the Club de la Booster? Um, let's go to Travis Elrod, T. Elrod. Notice how classy Roger Federer is. He didn't blame anybody else for his retirement, unlike other tennis players. Ooh, Ooh is that Ooh. a shot at uh, Serena? Serena, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's as far as I'm going to go with What do you tennis. think, David? That's as far you're, as I'm going to go, too. You're, yeah, gonna as far as you're going to go? Head. Head. Mm. Nod my head. That's yeah, right. Good. It's a good nod there. Uh, Malcolm Martin said, morning, guys. Morning. Uh, I'm late today. Had an early doctor appointment. Love the show. Writing that down, Malcolm. That's going to be 25 up-downs after hey, practice. Uh, you're here d while the show's on? You're right on time, I'm brother. Travis K, Kim K, hashtag Ask Call me Ray J. I'm a Kentucky fan. What do they need to do to win the SEC East? You got to be more explosive. Here's the thing with Kentucky and why I think they're a little bit of fool's gold, okay? If you look at, at the track record so far, and I love Mark Stoops. I'm not saying that they're a bad team. Like I said, Mark Stoops is the best coach in Lexington. It's not even close. It's absolutely not. And by the way, watch out. Kentucky's AD may be going to Auburn. Remember, you heard me say that. Uh, Barnhart. So anyways, Kentucky offensively has to find a way to hit more explosive plays. Last year, I'll continue to say it. Losing Wondell Robinson was a lot bigger loss than people were talking about during the offseason. He was the fixer for that team. Getting Chris Rodriguez back, great. The offensive line's not bad. They're, they're Kentucky on defense. They're going to be solid. Mm -hmm. Miami, Ohio, you had to run a kickback, had to get a pick six to pull away in that game. Florida, you're down 16 to 7. Snapped one over the punter's head, not looking good. What does Florida do? Pick six, you waited them out. You just waited them out. You handled business last week in the non conference. I just wonder, Cone, since you have to go to Knoxville, can we pull up Kentucky's schedule? I have it right quick? here. Let's go through it real I quick. I have it right here. So they have uh, Northern Illinois this weekend. That's a sneaky game. They'll beat them. It may, they may not cover them. Game. They'll beat them, though. Um, and then you go to Ole Miss. This is an interesting game to me. They go to Ole Miss. We don't know about Ole Miss yet. Uh, we don't. South Carolina at home. Mississippi State at home. That's so that's good. Be, that's and like you game. said, they go to Knoxville. This is why Tennessee's schedule is shaking out the best of anyone. Even though they go to Georgia, like we said yesterday, it's already going to be tough to beat Georgia yeah, anywhere. Yeah, Might as well play them on the exactly. road and then exactly. get Alabama and Kentucky and all the re and Florida at home. Exactly. Uh, at Missouri, One. Vanderbilt home. Then Kentucky gets Georgia at home, and then Louisville at home. I, I just God, don't see a path where you're not going to win the East because of Georgia, number one. But let's just say due to some something that you and Georgia are somehow close or you were to end up beating Georgia. I don't think you're going into Knox. You're going to have to score at least 31 points in Knoxville to win that game. I don't see it right now. Where are the explosive plays going to come from? The other kid, T. Robinson, that they have, I know is a nice young player, but the weapons around him just aren't as explosive enough, and I don't think Kentucky is going to be able to beat everybody 24-21. to 21. I just don't um, see that happening. Or 21-17. Keep talking for a second, because I want to pull up Tennessee's schedule now, because I want to see if there's a chance they could meet up. No, because Tennessee's going to host... Tennessee's going to host. So, yeah, this is Tennessee's three game slate, like we were talking about yesterday. Florida, yeah. LSU, LSU, Alabama. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Then you, you go two and one out of those? Yeah. So, what's interesting is if, if they could go two and one out of those, let's say Tennessee's only losses to Alabama, they could be going into that Kentucky game with one loss when Kentucky comes in undefeated mm -hmm. if they take care of Ole Miss and Mississippi State. I don't see them. Yeah. Well, Tennessee does have to play Bama. Not, not both of them. They no. get Mississippi State at home. 
and they go on the road to Ole Miss. I'm telling I'm you, Mississippi State, I know I know they dropped a lot of passes and a punt against LSU, Miss but Mississippi I mean, State. The mm-hmm. Wondell scary. Robinson ain't walking through that. Day. That's what I'm saying. Nobody, Not enough people were talking about that during the offseason. It shocked me. Mm. Everybody said, like, look, Will Levis, good player. But you need weapons around you. This isn't baseball. One guy can't go out there and shove for nine innings and you win. Or basketball, where one guy can go, go drop 50, you know, 20 rebounds and eight assists and three steals and you win one game. It's football. Think, will we get some more information after this weekend because now they will have had a common opponent? I know that um, Kentucky went to Florida and beat Florida, and now Florida is coming to Tennessee. But can we get some information? I'm, I'm sure. not yeah, big. I, you can, but I'm not huge on the transitive property in football just because it's so different week to week where you're playing and stuff like that. Um but you can gain a little bit. It, to me, I gain more from, from the physicality up front. That, that's what I want to see. Because obviously the game plan changes. You're playing against a different scheme. You may see some different things. And you may figure out, hey, hey, I'm Billy Napier. Maybe I need to run Anthony Richardson some more. <laughs> Maybe I figured that out. All right, one more B. Um, DC Wise says, I think Kirk Cousins is a better athlete than Aaron Judge. Get out of the chat. <laughs> I love that. Sadie, you stay in there forever. Yeah. You just burrow in there and you hibernate in there forever. I love that. But speaking about hibernating, we're not hibernating on a Thursday with our college football power rankings. Power rankings time. Power. Power. Unlimited power. All right, let's pull those rankings back. up so we can see them and show them to the good people. Let's go. Come on. There it is. Yeah, good. You did it. Powers. You did, you did it, guys. guys. All right, number one, Georgia, duh. Obviously, we all what? know that. All right, number two, Bama. I'm still having them there, Cone. Got you. I think we have to have them there. They're one of the Bama few teams that got. right now have the players, believe it or not, that can beat Georgia. Everybody that's jumping off that Bama bandwagon, just remember what Nick Saban does and the amount of talent they have and who they have coming off the injury list. That's big as well. Cone, we, we did a little back and forth, Ohio State and Michigan. Who's three or four? Because Notre there. Dame hadn't exactly, you know, Look like 1931 Notre Dame. We all remember how that year went. They've str- they struggled against Cal. You lost against We Are Marshall. Uh, so we still have Ohio State at number three. You got to put the Buckeyes at three. Yeah, Michigan, put the Buckeyes because of Michigan's schedule. Yes, because of, and because the win over Notre Dame is an impressive win. Mm-hmm. Now, what I've been hearing a is lot it an is, impressive? Win? Uh, yes, it at is. The time it here's was. what I've been hearing a lot is that you know because of Notre Dame's recent struggles since they played the Buckeyes that that is that is less of a win now. But remember that Clemson Georgia game last season in the opener when you're playing in that first week of the season. What was that score? Ten to three. 10 yeah, to but three? Clemson won ten, 10 to games three? though. Okay. Notre Dame may not go to a bowl. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But I still think you put the Buckeyes at three there. And then on, on the but flip side of that. But I agree with the Buckeyes at three, by the way. Okay. You agree with me on that? Though. Yes, I agree then, with the Buckeyes. And then, and then for people who are then on the flip side of that saying, well, Michigan shouldn't even be as high as four because of their schedule. Again, they can only play who they're playing. We're not ranking them four just because they've won the games. There are a lot of teams around the country. How they've four won. 4-0. It's how efficient are they on? I what test What is matters. the personnel? I test matters. And look, the second they lose, they'll be out of there too. So Yeah, no, I, I'm with you 100%. This I agree. Right. I, I was just <laughs> arguing the Notre Dame, it still looks like a good win at this point. To me, I think the jury is still out. It's looking worse and worse, but Ohio State, Cone, you know as well as I do, you know as well as anybody, we know the players that are on that roster. Mm-hmm. We know the way Ryan Day's recruited. I mean, it's, And it's, you had Jim Knowles. You had Jim They're Knowles, top yeah, five which, which is a great pick. Oklahoma at number five. I like this. I like this, too. You can almost put them, you can get Oklahoma and talk it in that four range, too. A little you bit. could. Well, I said I Oklahoma was my sleeper to make the college football playoff mm-hmm. this year. Because everybody, Brent Venables, new coach, new phone, who dis? You know, you got the collab, Brent. like I said. Yeah. It's Brent. Yeah. That's who it is. With Dylan and Jeff Levy. But hey, Oklahoma looks to me like they're playing complementary football, which is you didn't get that a lot from Lincoln Riley. Remember, you'd have the games where the offense was was blowing mm-hmm. up the scoreboard, but it turns into a shootout. Yeah, most like of all their games. They, they, then you'd have those, those very rare occasions where the offense was struggling, but Alex Grinch and the defense would step up and keep Oklahoma in the game. It seemed like Oklahoma – throughout the course of the season, can never play complementary football as well as possible where the defense and offense and special teams were all cooking. You've had a couple games with Brent where you've seen that. Yeah. Now, there's been some struggle. The Kent State game, I mean, you're barely up at halftime, but you come out and, and you make the move. I think that was a trap game. They were looking ahead to Nebraska a little bit. They ended up blowing Kent State mm-hmm. out. Uh, but I like the way Oklahoma's trending, but I do agree uh, with what Brandon Marcello said yesterday and what I was talking about in my open. We've seen Dylan Gabriel in small moments step up to the occasion, mm. right? but we haven't seen him in that game-winning drive in a, in a game that matters, you know, Bedlam, something like that, where you've got to go win the game for your team, even at UCF. Didn't see a lot. Yeah, UCF was, was rolling people when they were winning. That's true. It wasn't really tight. The one game that was tight, Louisville, 
Last play of the game, unfortunately, he dislocates his shoulder, I believe. AP yeah. has him at six right now because they have Clemson at five. Yeah, I like see, Oklahoma at yeah, five. It, or if someone had Oklahoma he, at four and you put okay Michigan too. at five, yeah. I could live with that. I agree with that. I, I would not be upset about that. Clemson at six. Clemson, to me, is so intriguing because Clemson is a lot how a lot of people thought they were going to be. Really talented on defense. You look at the front seven, that defensive line is hell on wheels. But offensively, at what point, and I think it's this weekend against Wake Forest, I think you see Wake Forest take a lead. I think you see Clemson struggle on offense. Mm. I think you see Clemson take out DJU, put in Cade Klubnik, and he never leaves as a starter again. They'll come back and win a tight one. I think Clemson is a much better team with Cade Klubnik at quarterback. People say, oh, well, he was two for five the other day. You watch the way that offense operates, mm. even in garbage time. It it's it's like, already looks faster for like, Cade Klubnik than it looks for DJU. It's like Max Johnson at AM. Yeah. I don't need you to come here and throw for 400 yards. Mm -hmm. Just run the offense. Run the offense. Be a threat. Stay within the offense, and that's how we'll win games. Because with Clemson, with a decent quarterback, a quarterback that is a little bit worth his salt, is a top four team. Because, I mean, I would look at Ohio State with a decent quarterback with Clemson. Clemson has a better overall football team, in my opinion, than Ohio State with a quarterback. Without a quarterback, though, Clemson, you can put Tennessee in front of them. You can almost put Arkansas in front of them. So until they figure out that quarterback room, they have all the talent, one of the best defenses well, we've seen. Well, yeah. Well, at Clemson now, the standard is not let's get to the playoff. The no, standard is we can win when we get there. They they have really been, if you think about it, them and Ohio State are the only two teams that have proven when they've gotten there, they can beat a Bama. They can beat a Georgia. Oklahoma hadn't proven it. Notre Dame hadn't proven it. Oregon, Washington ha hasn't proven it. So – Clemson, the standard is it's not just getting there. We can win when we get there. Not with the guy you got at quarterback right now. You're not beating Georgia with that quarterback. You're not beating Alabama with that quarterback. You're not beating Ohio State with that quarterback. I don't think you're beating Michigan with that quarterback. And I think it'd be a hell of a game, like Blaine said, against Tennessee or at USC or somebody like that. Because USC, while they're not the best up front, and we have a number seven, they have weapons outside. You can spit that bubble out. And let Mario yeah, go Mario get it. Mario Williams, Jordan Addison, the yeah. back from UCLA. J.A. J.A. can go get it, Their too. defense isn't there, but their offense is for real. And I, I think Oklahoma with Brett Venables are now, maybe not this year, but in a couple years, that he, he could fix the problem to where they could win games in the playoffs. I agree with that. Because it was defense. I agree with that. Games, what? In the playoffs. Yeah, it was I defense. agree with what that. Hurt. They can put up 40 points against Bama or Georgia or something like that, but their defense couldn't stop a nosebleed. That's so. exactly right. So we have Tennessee at 8, Arkansas at 9, you know, we we talked about this when we, we were getting together on this list. We put Tennessee ahead of Arkansas, not just because of the way they looked against Missouri State, but Arkansas's secondary is super suspect. I'm talking about first 48 yeah. suspect. You better find it quickly. First Speaking of first 48, 48, you got 48 hours until you're going no to have to find it. We have Kentucky 11, right? We have Kentucky, no Kentucky 11 Kentucky. because of what we said. They just lack explosiveness. And you've got you to give credit to Penn State. I mean, Penn State. And, and Auburn has a horrible team. One of the worst teams I've ever seen yeah, Auburn, bad. but it's still a hard place to play. Yeah. You have wins at Purdue, yeah. at Auburn. You have I mean, to put them in there. You have to put them there. Sean Clifford's been at Penn State since 1838. I mean, he's one of the spies on the turn show. He's been 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 Pennsylvania so long. They're, they're, the secondary can go up against anybody. You know a matchup I'd love to see? Penn State secondary versus USC. I want to watch That's USC and see. Tennessee play so bad. You want to watch who? USC and Tennessee. The final score is 70. Oh, I just 70. want to watch it. I just <laughs> want to watch it. That'd be so fun to watch. Oh, look, I'm an offensive guy. Receivers, just quarterback play, the, the, the offenses, the tempo of the offenses, man, that, that would just be so fun. You put Oklahoma, USC, Tennessee, and maybe Georgia in a playoff. What do we think about Penn State and Michigan? I think game. Michigan's is better at what Where is that same game? same team, but Michigan's is better at what, what they do. See, you know, I again I know uh, Michigan can only play who they put in front of them. They scored a lot. Is JJ McCarthy the difference or is Sean Clifford's experience the difference in mm. that game? That game's at Michigan. Oh, there you go. That game's at Michigan. There you go. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Penn State, that, <laughs> that game's always gonna be close. This is yeah. why when I was at Michigan, program. like yeah. Scott Leffler and Lloyd Carr, they would say if we go into Illinois and win by one at night in those hostile environments, that's a great win. Come back home and be happy. A dub's a dub. That's how the Penn, that's how the Big Ten was. I, so look, I, they're always gonna play tough. Yeah, tell us where on here you disagree. Tell us where you agree. Hell, drop us your top 10 in the comments. In the chat, let us know. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, today at 1130, exclusively for Daily Wire members only. So go to dailywire.com. We have an all-access use code booster. That's B-O-O-S-T-E-R. Blaine, I want to do keys to victory. Before we get Tom Luganville in here, I want to do keys to victory for the Brown-Steelers game. 
Don't want to go do that, but is there anything from the Booster Club lane that you're just super jacked? Um, Huddy, uh, yeah, I shaved the beard, man. Uh, it's getting hot. It was a thousand degrees yet. What do they say? Hottest under the oh, sun. Oh, Hutton said, uh, what did he, he says, I miss Wayne's beard already. It's almost, he it said, it's been almost an hour and I'm sad. Well, one, cheer up. There's football it's on. It's already growing back. I can and see and it. And two, Dude, it was 99 degrees yesterday. It was 101 degrees before that. Well, look, adversity reveals character. Yeah, and it reveals that I don't want to have my beard. Who knows? A mustache okay. might be coming back. So. Whoa! Yeah. Really? Yeah. Whoa! A mustache might be coming Blaine's back. Blaine's mustache. What a great follow on Twitter. The kid's holding his own. He really is. He's, I'm genuinely enjoying his Twitter. Sort of I, I, I enjoy it's seeing it. It's the best. You need to go follow. At, is it at Mustache Blaine? Somebody created a handle about Blaine's mustache, and the, the memes he makes are hilarious. I've saved him twice. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, yeah. I saw all that. Yeah, it's family. Yeah, yeah. It's family. You're fighting a, like an alien the other, yeah. or a yeah. predator, one or the other. That's just all right. Crazy. Kyle Jenkins, what is up, Kyle? If five, six, and seven all go undefeated, who gets left out of the playoff, or does the loser of the SEC championship get left out? See, this is where it gets really, really interesting. So at five, you've got uh, uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Six, was six Clemson. is Clemson. Seven, seven is um, USC. USC. So if they that that was my scenario earlier. That's exactly the what scenario the we talked about earlier. If five, five and six, six five, six, and seven, seven go undefeated, does they let's say Bama loses to Georgia in the SEC championship game and it's their only loss? Does Bama get left out of the playoff? If they go in, if those other teams go undefeated, and I think five, you got to leave Bama out of the playoff. Go undefeated. I think you have to leave them out. So you'd have Georgia. You'd have Georgia. Let's say Georgia, Ohio, Ohio State. State. Let's just say Ohio State for now. C- calm down, Cone. Um, Oklahoma. Okay. At the Big 12. Bam would be out. Yeah. And USC, Bam would no, be out. No conference champion who's undefeated is getting left out. Yeah, no, no. no. Bam would be out. And they should be out. Mm-hmm. Who knows, though? Please! Who knows, though, with Saban? Bam would get in not winning the division. Hell, they already did it. They got, they got in without winning the West. All right, uh, you want another one? Let's go one more. Mike's RFF Lifestyle. What's up, Mike? Mike, you're always good in the chat, man. You are. You are good in the chat. Uh, uh, hashtag Ask Cranico. Please tell me if you were coaching the Bears, what changes would you make right now? Now I'd fire the GM, okay, and say, "Give me some receivers." Oh, bring, hey, you tell him to bring let, your playbook. Let, let me get Justin Fields in here real quick. Hey, Justin, you need some more weapons? Yeah, man, I'm out here trying to do it all by myself, man. All right, that's guess Justin what we got? Fields. I think so. I don't know. I, don't know. No. I, think, I think that's exactly how it sounds. Oh. You got to get him some weapons. I mean, what's he supposed yeah. to do? What's he supposed to look? David Montgomery's good back. Mm-hmm. Good back. You got a good back. Offensive line's d- good enough. Yeah. Right now, Justin Fields got some witch in him. He's getting yeah. better. You got nobody outside. Darnell Mooney. Yep. Yeah. When your best receiver is Darnell Mooney, he's not a bad player. You're not winning anything. You're not. I'm sorry. It's like Dr. Evil says. Hold on. Let me get to that. How about no? That's exactly <laughs> right. That's Does like the GM in. still have a job? How about no? You're fired. So look, guys, we're tanking. It's a good question. We're tanking. But let's stay in the NFL. Keys to victory. Keys All right, to victory. Keys to victory for the NFL. Then we'll, when we get uh, Lugs on here, we're going to do some college because there is a game tonight that should continue to be played that's not – you know what? I'm not even getting that right now. But Steelers, Browns. Here's my keys. Y'all ready for them? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me take them out of my pocket. That was a joke. That was a keys joke. Browns. What's crazy about the Browns, do you guys realize that they run the eighth fastest pace offense in the NFL? I didn't know that until you told me that. Yeah. I the eighth that. fastest. No, you didn't. I knew that. No, you didn't. No, didn't. Well, I know who you're picking with, with, with the jacket you got on. But to me, they're keys. You have to use the Jets' oh. loss as motivation. Hold on. You have to use the way that game ended as motivation. You can whine about it. You can cry about it. You can let it be a hangover and affect how you play in a negative way this game. Or you can say, you know what? We should be undefeated. We're a good enough team to be undefeated. We made some mistakes at the end. We've got Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. Jacoby Brissett's doing a really good job. Mm-hmm. Running the offense could be a happy happy ending in Cleveland, even without Deshaun Watson. The defense has played well enough. Obviously not at the end of the game when Joe Flacco comes in, who's 113 years Joey old. Joey Flacco. Art. That's exactly right. The, the fight in Delaware. Blue fire. Hands. The fire. Uh, what was, uh, that was unbelievable to watch. But you have to use it as much. I want to see an angry Browns team. I want to see an angry, angry Browns team. I think this could be a game, and I'm going to get to the Steelers key in a second, where the Browns get up and they just keep pounding. They just keep no, pounding and keep adding and keep happen. adding and keep adding and keep adding. And I'm going to explain to you why I really want that to happen. But you have to use it as motivation. You can't let it affect you in a negative way. You have got to find a way, if you're Stefanski, to use that as motivation. And I think they will. That's why I think Cleveland's got a really good shot in this game. I know they're the favorite. Now for the Steelers. Look, Mitch. What does Mitch Trubisky and the unvaccinated have in common? They don't take shots. Mm. They don't do it. <laughs> All right? Won't do it. Can't Mitch do Trubisky it. checks the ball down. Even he was like, "All right, listen." Like that's the like, 
There were opportunities there early. He shouldn't have checked it. He literally is Professor Checkdown. If he was a superhero, it would be Captain Checkdown. If he was a teacher, you know what you address him as? Mr. Checkdown. If he's a woman, woman teacher, what would you address him as, Count? Her. What we keep using Whoa. this word. What word? Woman. <laughs> What is it? Anyway, long story short. Justin Madden here, please. Yeah, 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 let's get Walsh in here. You have got to take some chances because what you're seeing defenses do, and I know the Steelers' offensive line isn't great at all. I know they've struggled to run the ball even with Najee, but you know what takes a little bit of pressure off the run game and the intermediate to short passing game? When there is at least a threat of you down the field. Even if you incomplete it. That's why I I tell football fans all the time, guys, Sometimes when you throw the vertical or you take the shot down the field True. and you don't complete it, it can still be a win. Back them up a little bit. I know why? Because as a defense guy, I'm like, oh, they'll do it. You know, you know how you like don't believe somebody. They'll say they'll, say they'll do something. Like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Then they do it. You're like, well, I can't believe you actually did it. Mm-hmm. That's kind of that feeling. It's always in the back of your mind. So when you're calling stuff in defensively, you still have that thought, all right, they will take the shot deep. Maybe we need to give them a little, little space uh, up front and keep stuff in front of us, which opens up the run game a little bit. Opens up the quick game, and guess what happens? Well, all of a sudden, when that quick game and intermediate game starts to hurt him, Cone, and that run game starts to hurt him, then you get that inverse effect. Then those safeties start to come up a little bit. Those linebackers start to guess a little bit. That play action gets a lot more deadlier. The boot gets a lot nastier, and you're able to attack down the field. But if you never take the shot, you're never going to know. That's just the truth. Yeah, I agree. And I had something similar for the Browns. Look, first of all, get Jacoby Brissett out of the pocket a little, a little bit. I agree I with that. Steelers defense is so that. good. Get him on the roll. Get him on the move. And then don't be afraid to play action on early downs. Like what you were saying, you know the Steelers are going to— a little bit. Do what? Yeah, exactly. Backwards a little exactly. Bit, yeah. I mean, with the Steelers defense is so good, you know they're going to stack the box, mm-hmm. try and stop Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, all that. Let Jacoby Brissett play action on early I like downs, that. I think. Go ahead and take, even if they're not shots, yeah. you know, go ahead and at least get the Steelers' defense out of rhythm. And then for the Steelers, on me, uh, from my side, on defense, I think you go to TJ Watt, and I think you say, look, are you hurt or are you injured? Okay? And then he's going to say, Coach, I'm injured. I tore my pack. And then you're going to say, yeah, but you with one arm is better than everyone else. Yeah, so half is really is. still a half so we, The team needs you. Yeah. And T.J. Watt is the type of guy, when you say the team needs no. you, he's going to say— So you want T.J. Watt to play with a torn right. peg. You're right. And I think that TJ, <laughs> no, I think maybe even they go ahead and amputate, right? He's robot arm. arm? Robot arm? Yeah. It's a Jacob deGrom situation. I love T.J. it. T.J. Watt comes Love where your head's right? at right here. He's like, look, you're because we're not scoring any points on offense, which brings me to my no, offensive no. key. Don't play offense. Steelers tonight, don't play offense. I love that. Punt on first down. At the end because Mika Fitzpatrick and the boys, especially if you get robot arm TJ Watt out there, yeah. they're going to put up more points than the offense is. So if you're not going to play Kenny Pickett mm-hmm. and you're going to leave Mitch out there, don't even play offense. Punt on first down, see if the Browns maybe make some turnovers on special teams, mm-hmm. and then you win on, on defense. When, when would you put Kenny Pickett in? How bad would it have to get for you to put Kenny What time does the game start? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what, what my key is. What not? time does the game that's start? That's what my key is. Why not? What's the key for the Steelers? Put Kenny Pickett in. And is he going to be awesome? No, he's going to make mistakes. No, uh, it doesn't have to be Awesome. Don't have make mistakes. Put him in. The key number two. Where, where's Kenny Pickett? Put him in. <laughs> Why is it Kenny Pickett? And if you're stealing, and uh, the key for the Browns is two things: one, run the ball, and two, make sure you don't hurt Mitch Trubisky so they don't put Kenny Pickett in. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? Do you have the uh, have the under? Oh, uh, we'll we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll get to it. Subline. Your key number one is put Kenny Pickett in. Yeah. Number two is Why put Kenny, Kenny Pickett, Pickett in. in. And number three is don't hurt Mitch Trubisky. For the Browns, yeah. If you're it's the Browns, ball, because they'll put sack Kenny him, Pickett sack in. Sack him lightly. Make sure they keep him in the game. Keep Mitch in the game. Tell me he's doing a great job. Yeah. So, hey, coach, maybe even give him a couple passes early. You know, he hits a dig right here. Let maybe him a, get some comeback here. Momentum. Yeah, yeah. Give him some momentum. Mind hey, he looks okay. But make sure he stays in the game. So, he will mess it up at some point. There'll be Deontay Johnson will be running down the field and be like, no, check down here, Najee. <laughs> and then they'll come out of the sidelines and be confused like we all were. So. Yeah, th- no, I, look, I'm, I'm totally with it. It's it's going to be a really interesting game. Anytime uh, you have the Steelers and the Browns, you know, meet up, it, even though they haven't, the Browns what haven't a exactly terrible been un- night game. Uh, I don't think it's a terrible Ew, thing. I saw this. I looked on my phone. I was like, ew, gross. Anybody but these two teams. I got to watch Jacoby Verset and Mitch Trubisky. You can go watch at Coastal it. Carolina and Georgia. Well, you know what? I would the, rather watch WNBA on a volcano. Stop. You are the same Stop guy that complained it. about. <laughs> you are the same guy that complained about having to bet baseball yesterday, and you're going to sit here today and complain about the Steelers in your mouth. You know what you are? You're sharp. That is not the same. That is not the same. I, uh, what do you mean it's not the baseball, same? Baseball, because I'm not watching baseball. I'm not watching it. I'm gonna watch this. You talking about all the matchups in the NFL? You You're give gonna me Versed. You give me Versed versus Mitch Trubisky. 
I, I'm, I like your. Let's just play defense. Let's have both let's defenses punt on first down. play defense against you. They're going to punt on. Just punt on first Who down. Who would have thought the that chance. both the offensive guys on this set would be advocating? It hurts for me. Look, we're trying to wait. It like, hurts me. You know what? To this watch is when Mitch we need Tom Trubisky Trubisky play. This is where, but I don't want to hear this you talk what, about any more Yankees post. Yeah. Oh, all the I don't want to hear anything else. I don't want to hear Aaron Judge in an Ohio State jersey talking about how awesome my fantasy. Next Wednesday, make sure you tune in. That's going to be the best get off my lawn ever. No, it's not. Tom Luganbill from ESPN, please come in here and help me, Tom. <coughs> Blaine and Cohn are slowly slipping into insanity, but I, I just rented the boat to take him to Shutter Island. I just got to talk Mark Ruffalo into setting it up for me. Dude, let me just say this. Whatever discussion I fell into right here and I heard <laughs> the term baseball, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> love, baseball is watching, like watching paint dry. Yeah, oh, grass good. grow. Mm. I can't take it. I do not understand, and I, I, I'm guilty of maybe not understanding all the subtle nuances. And I can't even imagine what it must take to hit a hundred mile an hour fastball. Not easy. But the the standing around is the problem. Like, I, I mean, come on, let's go. Like you mean like they're the, making the base like, like, yeah. like the Steelers, like the Steelers offense. <laughs> yeah, Tom, yeah, Tom. Tom, don't worry. The bases are getting bigger yeah, in baseball, so it's all going to be fixed. So they're they're yeah. that's a legitimate true thing. But Blaine does have a good idea about uh, about making baseball more exciting. Blaine, tell Tom your yeah, idea. Yeah, Tom was a couple things here. We'll start with this. Um, seventh innings. You know the seventh inning stretch, but it's a seventh inning fight. <laughs> All right, so you'll get a player from each team, whether that's a designated guy you have designated or two hitter. guys who agree to fight each other, and then they fight in the seventh inning. And, you know, going through Tommy John surgery, that's fine. Let's amputate the whole arm. Let's go Will Smith. I am legend. Let's go robot arm. I want to see 140 miles You want steroids basketball. to be legal. And I want steroids legal. I want to see how hard we can throw it and how far we can hit it. You want butts in seats, and that's how you do it. You're welcome. I'll take 20%. <laughs> I don't disagree. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what I would do. I'll tell you what I would do. What would you do, Tom? To quicken the whole damn thing up. I'd do a fight after the second inning and then play a third <laughs> inning, and then the game's over. I love it. Let's do it, Tom. Let's go. Let's Tom make our own league. Yeah. Let's Tom Lugan, who'd have thought? The alliance we never saw coming. Tom Lugan, uh, I love it. Been in their own baseball league. But, Tom, I, you know, Lugs, I know you keep up with the NFL, too. What? It, it's funny. If you would have told me that the Browns were the eighth fastest-paced offense, in the NFL, I would have put you in a straight jacket. But they are. I think this is an intriguing matchup tonight. I don't hate this matchup. Mitch Trubisky's trying to resurrect his career. Stop Won't it. throw it past 15 Stop yards, it. but he's trying to resurrect his career. And that, look, it, the, the Browns after last week, see if you can get off the mat. It's football. I Listen, I like it because it's ugly, right? Mm. Everything for these two teams is hard. Nothing is easy which is what makes each and every series, you know, worth watching because you're either waiting to see something surprising that you're not expecting to happen in the passing game, all right, or you're looking to see some bad ball come across uh, your screen. And I, and I hear you guys talking about Mitch Trubisky. I, I, I find it interesting. We, we look at the NFL and we, and, we, and we see the parody across the league because obviously it's, it's the top 0.05% of the people on this planet that are actually playing on 32 teams, but it doesn't matter what level of football we're talking about. You either have a quarterback or you don't, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you guys gone and looked at Bill Belichick's record since Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay. Uh, system coach. Good. I'm just saying uh, you can go back a long ways. Yeah. Right? Look at Mike Shanahan's career without John Elway. All right. Outside mm-hmm. of the one year in Seattle, look at Mike Holm- Holmgren's career without Brett Favre. I mean, these are you. Uh, here's one for you. All of the three young gurus right now in the NFL: um, the guy at Green Bay, the guy at, at, at um, the Rams, mm. and I want to say the guy at the 49ers. All three of them were on the Redskins staff at the same time, and they were three and thirteen. Yeah. Mm. Why? Players. They didn't have a freaking quarterback. quarterback. Yes. That's why. That's exactly. It's it's a great point. I tell you another one. Phil Jackson. Had Michael Jordan, had Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal. That's why I said I literally led the show. I believe it was on Monday with talent 
overtakes play calling, and it's not even close. Because it was always. just about – it's always. And some people – that's why, like, the, the first – like, South Carolina fans, the first thing they want to do is rip Marcus Satterfield apart. It's Marcus Satterfield's fault we didn't beat Georgia. No! G- God was the reason you didn't beat Georgia because they were better. Same. Like, they're better players. <laughs> like, that's just the truth. As a coach, what am I supposed to do? Sit there in the booth and use magic and – like, unless oh, – like God. I said – Unless you had a relationship with Albus Dumbledore or Leonardo Gandalf, which I don't know if that's his first name, but I'm just Leonardo just Gandalf. 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 What is it's that? Good to me. You weren't winning that game. It actually, you mean we don't know. That's what. That's why I, I always chuckle, and I'm sure you guys have done it too. Like, um, for example, the 2012 national championship game, Notre Dame and Alabama. Okay, those two teams came out of the huddle in pregame warm up. All right, standing on the 50-yard line, looking at one team, looking at the other team. <laughs> Ryan Kelly said, I'm going to LSU. <laughs> that team is going to beat that yeah, team by 30 insane. points. Okay? <laughs> That's and, so and true. You, it, it's the dudes, man. It's the body types. I, hey, listen, Clemson, Alabama, national championship. Current UConn head coach right now, Jim Mora. Mm-hmm. He and I are sitting there in San Francisco, and he goes, we don't have – a single player in the Pac-12 that looks like any of the guys <laughs> exactly- that are playing on these two teams right here. Yeah, Physics there is physics, go. Tom. Physics yep. is physics. You're not changing it. It's a real thing. Let me try and move this studio real quick by myself. I can't. You want to know why? Because it's physically impossible, David. I can't do it. <laughs> even Bill Nye knows that, and he's not even a real, real science, science guy. Yeah. But, Tom, speaking about ugly, you were at the Georgia Tech game. I – I thought they were at least going to have a pulse this year with Jeff Sims coming back. Our buddy Jeff Collins, I've been trying to – I know it was a hard overhaul taking over for Paul Johnson. I mean, hell, you had 12 running backs on scholarship. I get it. But, man, they just look bad. You saw it in person. Like, I I just – how bad was it in person? It was was bad. You know, I'm sitting there because we had come off of the Labor Day night where Georgia Tech played really, really good. Yeah. Georgia Tech's performance against Clemson – was more about two block punts and self-inflicted wounds in terms of procedure penalties than it was about Clemson just going out there and beating them up. That score was not indicative of the game. First half was a fight. This score was indicative of yeah. how the game um, played out. You know, the issue is, and you referenced Jeff Collins, and I feel for him to some degree because you mentioned the overhaul with the roster. You can make an argument that it would be the single most difficult overhaul we've seen in recent memory in college yeah, football. It's like taking McDonald's and, you, and selling shoes now. Like, it's, it's the same right. thing. Oh, and then, by the way, add to that, you have to sell shoes in a pandemic where you don't have customers coming into the store. Exactly you can't right. go out to the customers. Yeah, you have right? to sell shoes to people that only have arms. So, yeah, it, 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 it killed him. And I'm, I know excuses are running thin at Tech, and, and they should be, and he's on a very, very short leash. But the thing I've taken away, I've taken away a couple of things from them. Number one, they never make their own breaks, ever. They never create something yeah. good. And then when somebody gives them a gift, they don't capitalize on it. Yeah. Okay, it's it's you're just sitting there shaking your head. Number two, the quarterback is so mind bogglingly frustrated because he's so talented, yep. but he doesn't produce. He's so streaky and inconsistent, and you watch him and you see him throw, and he's big and he's fast and he's athletic, and it's like, what is missing? And they've tried a variety of different ways to get it to work. And for whatever reason, they they can't get it to work. And I just you know, I, you know, I poked some fun at myself here. So you can make the argument that I was the starting quarterback on maybe the worst Georgia Tech team in the history of, 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 of Georgia Tech. Okay. So I'm standing there on the sideline on Saturday and I'm looking up at the end zone and I'm seeing their signage and I'm looking at the uh, 1990 national championship. Right. Mm-hmm. And do you remember that year they were co-national champions? Do you remember with who? I, I don't. I was, uh, gosh. I, Colorado. I what year was Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. Colorado. That's right. Colorado. Wow, so then I'm looking at the scoreboard. Football. Yeah, it's 42 to nothing. I'm looking at the scoreboard. And then I look over at the other digital board that's showing the day's scores, you know, of what's happening around college football. Mm-hmm. And Minnesota is beating Colorado 49 to 7. <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah. And I'm going, what the hell happened to these two programs? Then I remembered that the week before, Georgia Tech beat Western Carolina, right? Yes. That team that I was on in 94, our only win was against Western Carolina. That's wild. It, there's some, look, you want to know how we live in the Matrix? That, you know what? It's been 61 <laughs> years since Roger Maris broke the home run record. 
And you know what the number is? 61. 61. Just look around for a second, guys. Does that not freak you out? Let's be honest. Where's Neo? <laughs> When's Keanu Reeves showing up in a suit telling me where I need I'm right to here. What white rabbit? Oh, I'm geez. right here. I'm right here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, so, speaking, of, speaking about keys, like the key maker on the Matrix, got a good game tonight, man. Virginia Tech, West Virginia. People forget. I mean, these are old Big East, I mean, rivals. I mean, you literally <laughs> played from 73 to 2005. Since then, you've only played twice, and there's no future meeting scheduled. I wish we could find a way because I love this matchup. I know we have the backyard brawl with West Virginia and Pitt, and that's cool. But Virginia Tech, West Virginia, it just feels right, man. It feels like college football. My key to this game, uh, if you look at it, uh, West Virginia's defense, They've allowed every offense worth their salt to do what they've wanted to do. Like, for example, right. Pitt, right, with Keaton Slovis, they, they, they were hitting over 300 yards passing against Kansas. You allowed over 200 yards rushing, and you've given up in aggregate, and all of your games total come on, six yards per play. It's not about JT Daniels. Wheaton's a hell of a player at receiver. They've got some good, mm -hmm. capable backs. Defensively, Tom, they're not taking away the strength of the other team or at least reducing it. At some point, to use a basketball reference, you got to make them dribble with their left a little bit. Yeah, there, there, there's no doubt about it. And if, if, if the left for Virginia Tech would be running the football to some degree, if we're going to count on Grant Wells being kind of the Grant Wells we've seen the last couple of weeks and not the Grant Wells we saw versus Old Dominion, yep. then West Virginia is going to have to come up with a way of getting them off track um, and getting Grant Wells off schedule offensively yep. and somehow getting – West Virginia can't get teams behind the chains. Like it, when, when West Virginia is playing on defense, they're not having regular third and sevens. They're not yep. having regular third and ten plus. They're providing third downs to manageable situations for the opposing offense. And that somehow has to change. And I'm not so sure that West Virginia isn't to the point now where they're on defense where they say, you know what, the hell with it. we got to sell out. Yeah. We, we, if we're going to go down, let's go down swinging, whether it's early down run blitzes, whether it's bringing the kitchen sink on obvious passing downs. Let's let's just do something to either be disruptive or to create some chaos, because what we're doing to this point, to your point, is we're giving it up on the ground. We're giving it up through the air and every conceivable way. We don't have an answer. That's exactly right. At some point, you got to pull the pin in the grenade. I mean, what's the worst case scenario? You're going to keep giving up yeah, yards and points. Like, how, how, what's happened? That's exactly right. And it's funny, you, Tom, you bring up my key for Virginia Tech is just that. Grant Wells, you throw four picks against Old Dominion, hadn't thrown one since. You transfer from Marshall. That's a big step going from Marshall to Virginia Tech with a lot of pressure on it. I think maybe that first game, there was a little bit of sure. nerves there, especially when you go back and watch some of the throws sailed on them a little bit. But I'm going to get uh, – so that you've got to protect the ball defensively with Brent Pry and that – I mean, Lane Stadium sold out. It's going to be nuts. Inner Sandman, I think they'll be fine defensively. But a name to remember, all right? And apparently if your name's Dax, you can play defense. Oh, yeah. You know, Dax, Dax, Dax Hill, Hill yeah. from Michigan. Dax Holyfield has 23 tackles, eight tackles for loss, a sack – Two yeah. fumble recoveries, a forced fumble. He sold 13 hot dogs at halftime and just Ooh, made Lizzie. an A-plus on his uh, philosophy midterm. Yeah, so <laughs> at some point, Lizzie. you know, th there's some guys on Virginia Tech. I think you're going to see a either score. I know this. <laughs> stop the presses. A score on special teams or on defense from Virginia Tech tonight Beamer that ball. ends up being Beamer the difference. Ball. Beamer yeah. ball. Okay. Hey, by the way. I have to correct you on one thing. I assure you, if he's at Virginia Tech, they are not offering philosophy class. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, very that's very true. That's very true. But, uh, Tom, too, I, I want to ask you, I, I know I know, we're going to talk a little bit more about the other games, but Florida, Tennessee, how do you see it? I don't know. Can Anthony Richardson complete a pass that results in a touchdown? I mean, well, I don't know. Is Billy going to run him at all, Tom? Is At some point, is Billy going to run him? He's going to treat him like Joe Flacco. Like, you have a Ferrari. Yeah, I'll I mean, use this example. You have a Ferrari for a day. I'm not driving the speed limit, dog. I'm going 1,000 miles an hour. I think, they're, I, I think you're 100% correct in how they need to utilize his legs and him in the run game because that is something – that creates an entirely different set of circumstances exactly. defensively for Tennessee. Exactly it forces right. you to have to play 11 on 11. When you don't run the quarterback, you're playing 11 on 10 because you don't have to account for that extra hat in the box. And so I think they've got to put the pressure with the quarterback run game on Tennessee. But at the end of the day, if Tennessee is able to reel off 85, 90 plays, all right, that Florida cannot win this game without some semblance of a passing game. Exactly. They're going to have to create big chunk plays in the passing game to keep pace. Because if Tennessee is able to 
I don't want to say score at will, but if Tennessee has done what we've seen them do to this point, and that is move the football through chunk plays, short drives that result in touchdowns, the only way Florida's keeping pace is to be able to return that in kind through the air. And for what we've seen, uh, we know what Anthony Richardson can do with his legs. He's a monster athlete, but the, the passing game performance, and, yeah. and to be honest with you guys, you can even go back to you can even go back to the the Utah game, and I've got Utah this week, so I went back to that game. He didn't play very good in that game outside of a couple of distinct plays, and so some answer has to to emerge in the passing game for Anthony Richardson. I, I agree. I mean, it ended up costing him the game. I mean, you go back and look at that Utah game, he could have pulled the ball in a couple of those zone reads and hit he his could head have. on the goalpost. And I thought he was going to more. Tom, I want to ask you about the Bedlam rivalry. Reports are Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are not going to play each other anymore once Oklahoma moves to the SEC. Sounds like there's a little bit of sour grapes on Oklahoma State side with the athletics department and Coach Gundy. And Oklahoma is saying, look, that was Oklahoma State's decision not to want to continue the rivalry. Is the loss of this rivalry bad for college football or will this be a non-issue i think any loss of a rivalry is bad for college football i think any loss of a special weekend for both alumni bases and, and the student athletes and regardless of sport if you decide not to play for what looks like petty grievances here which is what i don't like if you decide not to play then why are you deciding not to play if Oklahoma is going to the SEC and Oklahoma is knowingly going to have a more difficult schedule during the regular season and is still willing to play this game, what does that tell you about the level of importance of this game from a rivalry uh, perspective? I, I, you know, I don't care how unregionally based college football becomes, and it's probably going to become worse in that regard, but if you have long-standing 80, 90, 100, 120-year rivalries that can still be played, play them. Yep. Play them for the sake of – Everybody else, forget your little grievances and, you know, you're upset about this or you're upset about that. So, yeah, I think it's bad for college football. I think, and I think it's bad for the fans and the alumni bases. And then we all miss out. We all miss out on a fantastic weekend of football and a game that we're going to look forward to, regardless of whether or not we're a fan of either of those teams. And now, what's the likelihood that that game gets replaced against an FCS or a G5 opponent to help <laughs> lighten the schedule? High. The Oklahoma a and I agree. It's a shame. It is. Yeah, uh, Blaine, it, we're running out of time here. One quick question, if you got one on one from the Booster Club. Yeah, I got a couple of things. First, Tom, that Mandalorian helmet behind you to the right is sweet. And two, no, no, yes. Legos. Yeah. Oh, but that's Legos. Time. Legos, man. That's Love well done. Oh. That's we artistry. Like Batman. Artistry. <laughs> that, man. Where's the commissioner? That's dope. Super that's dope. Great. We're going to go to <laughs> M. Hutton, Tom. He has a question for you. He says, UCLA yeah. open at a two, uh, plus two and a half versus Washington next week. How can this line be real? You, uh, UCLA is barely beating Sunbelt teams. Shout out South Alabama and Washington just beat a ranked Big Ten hangover. You know, those, those folks in the desert are in business for a reason, right? And I think that, that sometimes they take, and I do this too, it's hard to get 85, 18, 19, 20-year-olds to get up for a team that when you're watching mm -hmm. tape all week long, you turn the tape on, you're like, boy, we are so much better than these guys. Yeah. So guess what happens? You don't focus. You don't prepare. All right? The other team's got nothing to lose and everything to gain. You go out and you play bad, and you happen to win the game because at the end of the day, you had better athletes and you pulled off a player. Yeah. Okay? And I see it. I, mm -hmm. I, yeah. And so I, I think the odds makers now, they, they look to this and they say, well, UCLA, Washington is going to have UCLA's attention, right? The, the prep, the focus, how they go into the game is going to be in, entirely different. And to me, that's how I would explain that. Um, I yeah. still don't think we know how good Washington is. I, I'm not convinced we know. Like, I look at Washington. What tells me Washington is any better than Washington State? All right. How about, is Washington right now any better than Kansas or Duke? I don't know. I, I don't know yet enough about the, the sample size for what we've seen from so many of these teams. We're finding out e more each and every week, but I, I could see this game between UCLA and Washington being very close. Yeah. Well, Tom, I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you so much. We're going to have you next week. Enjoy your time, Mandalorian helmet, Batman Lego helmet as well. It's just a great situation. <laughs> we appreciate you as always. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend.
All right, Tom. Hey, thanks, Tom. my friend. Tom Luganville, we could have him on for Tom's three hours job. and talk. We're going to have it's keys to victory man. for all Texas A&M, Arkansas, all those big games to, uh, tomorrow. But I'm going over to the board of I know what time it is. <laughs> Here's what we got. You've fallen over to Yeah, as I kick over everything on the way out. Jeez. Yeah. Pulling so, a China shop, man. That's exactly right. I'm a China in a bull shop. Just remember that. You're a China in a bull shop? I'll tell yes. you, man. Those bull shops, you got to watch out for that's, them. That's right. Especially when China's in there. By the way, we play Shapiro this weekend. I play, oh, excuse me. I play Shapiro this weekend, fantasy. Cone's got Knowles. Blaine, who got you Knowles. got? I got Clavin. Oh, I'm playing no. Clavin this week? Yeah, the auto draft king. Look oh, at that. no. Got to get healthy, please. I'm trying to reach out. If Clavin's team does watch this, I'm trying to reach out, maybe get a bet going that whoever the loser has to dress up as Gandalf. I like that. Mm. I think so Walsh sweet. plays Bickley, too. That's nice. So Team Morningwire team versus Morning Walsh. Team Morningwire plays Bickley. God, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love seeing Walsh go to that WNBA game. You've seen Shapiro so growing the beard out. Yeah, yeah. saw that. Yeah, it's nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Not Somebody bad. Else, Respect. Maybe. He wanted a Twitter handle. Who knows? Here's what I got tonight, boys. Look, Virginia Tech at home. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with with what I feel. I'm riding with the Grant fear. Grant Wells. All right, finding Matthew McConaughey's. That's exactly right. All right, all right, all right. Give me Virginia Tech minus one. I got this yesterday at plus a buck twenty five. Mm-hmm. Plus a buck twenty five. So plus one twenty five. Virginia Tech minus one. Why take a money line at plus one hundred? If they win by one, it's a push. But come on, let's look at the odds. Let's win by two at least. Then my second bet. Give me the Browns. Give me, uh, I don't know why. I the Eagles? Philly there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, Jake, I've been looking at that bet the entire <laughs> day. Freaking out. Trying to figure out <laughs> oh, what it was. It. It's Pittsburgh, okay. not PHI. Sorry, guys. I, I was like, this, this is up a, here at 5.30 in the morning. This is a baseball game. Just taking the over. That's 30s. right. Give me, give me <laughs> Guardians, Phillies, yeah. over 37 pitches in the first Plus That's not a it. million. <laughs> here's, here's what I got. Give me the Browns, Steelers, over mm. 37 on the alternate line. All right, bought it down a point and a half. Over because 30, 'cause I'm you, thinking in my mind. Seeing? What are you seeing right 20, now? Like here's what I here's what I'm thinking in my mind. All right. 21-17 gets me the win at 30 at under 37. You see what I'm saying? Or no, I didn't know if there was like a polar bear met a penguin who met a deer. No, not yet. Listen, on, I'm not on forcing a, the on, signs. On all right. I've got to see the Thursday. animals. Ugh. That it has to happen. I may walk outside, a bird may land on my car. It may be a red bird. Yeah. It may, Iowa State may it may be the same red bird that told me Iowa State was gonna be Iowa. By three to four points, they win by three points. Yep. Maybe the same one that told me Florida was going to beat Utah by a field goal. They won by a field goal, but I'm not forcing it. All so right, I'm, if, not, I'm Ace Ventura. What, this. what, what if one the, of the signs completely conflicts with everything you've ever known about football? Yeah. What do you do then? I trust the signs. Okay. Yeah, and not you telling me to look in trash cans at squirrels, which we all. Know I didn't tell you to look in there. You said the squirrel was in there, and I asked if this was a sign. That, I'll see, still you take prompted the blame, me. I st- but I'm not the one who came over and said, "So quit looking in trash cans." I still think you're. I still think you're in. We, on us, it. we thought we might have to save a squirrel. I saved a bird out of that save trash squirrels. can. Before Hashtag save out. the squirrels, and that's what we thought we were doing. Mm-hmm. Little did we know he, that's where he wanted to be. First of all, do you really trust squirrels? No. No, I trust them. They're Secret rats with Secret pushy agents. tails. Do I trust them? They're 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 spies for the I don't Russians. Not trust them. I look. I, I don't think you're to, wrong. I trust them to climb up in that tree when a dog comes out. Why are they always watching? Huh? Why are they always? Why are they always this watching? is a great point. We anyway, can go in. I, we can go deep on this. Yeah. Extra, squirrels are Russian extra, spies. Extra content. I yeah. really thought about squirrels taking, are Russian spies. If I really you thought about taking the Brown Steelers under 31 and a half at plus 220. I just love to go it. super. I love it. I want to do it. But watch it be 17 to 10. All those points the Browns gave up late in the last couple games. And then I have Nick Chubb on my fantasy team. I need him to score points. I stayed away from it. Okay. okay. I'm gonna let you take the under tonight over there and you have fun. I'm Thank gonna take the Braves money line. Okay. Minus 145. Max night. Freed on the mound. We're still trying to win the division. Let's figure it out. Let's win a game on the road, and then Coastal Carolina money line and tonight minus yeah. one thirty. Georgia, uh, they got Georgia State. Ooh. They're on the road. I Snakey. almost took the under. They Jamie Chadwell in the game. Now that's you know? a good game. Grayson I, McCall kicked the motion. Big Chadwell. I can't happened. believe Charlotte beat Georgia State. I still can't believe it. Charlotte's terrible. No, no, no. I, yeah, I lost. A, I lost one of my bets last Saturday. I thought that was such a good bet. I tell you what, the under sixty-two for that Georgia State Coastal game. That's a lot of points. They, they can put it up. Coastal been just blowing it out of the water. Off yeah, the I know. It's kind of weird. All right, this one general. I'm taking. Give me Pittsburgh plus eight. Uh, the thing about this game is uh, this is going to be a low-scoring game. The defense is going to play. Any one possession, like, if I can get a team with multiple possessions, you have to beat them by, I'll take it, especially in the NFL. Give me Pittsburgh, Browns under 42 and a half. No way. Yeah, I like that. No. So we can both hit. We can no both No way they score more than 42 and a half points. They're probably now since I just said that. I want you, I, yeah, I want you to say it again. Look right yeah, now. I just don't understand how. Look, the Browns are going to run the ball. It's going to be Nick Chubb. 
And Mitch is just going to look for, confused for four, uh, four quarters. So, like, I feel great about it. <laughs> All right, Baby Cone's going uh, Cleveland money line at minus 190. That'd be the Browns. Okay. He's going to go Dodgers, D-backs, Nerfy, minus 150. Boys, 131. Well, I love huh? looking in, uh, at Nerfies, like, out an hour past the game and just looking and both of them hit. It's so yeah. awesome. Well, it look it's so awesome. That's what I did with my two yesterday. Uh, I didn't look until after. Well, the Astros and the, you know, I've, I, I watched Adam Wainwright blow the nerfy for me the other day with two outs and, and runners on second and third. Gives up a blue single to left. Bottom of the first. I don't want to talk about it anymore. But last night, the Astros just went ahead and scored one run against the Ray. I hate betting baseball. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. But we appreciate you guys. Going to read all the Booster Club bets tomorrow. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us on all social media platforms. It's Ed Crane Company on Twitter. Go find out. Go to Daily Wire Plus. We got an all access at 1130. And like the chances of that not being a good time, we're going, going. Gone.